Hey everyone, uh, this is going to be a super basic uh, Python tutorial and I'm going to be using Jupyter Notebook and I highly recommend you install Jupyter Notebook. It's free and it's uh, very useful for using Python for homework problems and whatnot. So first the basics, I just, um, you know, I'm using the print command to print hello ISS and you can see that if I use um, my um, apostrophes to encapsulate the text, uh, that is what it will return. Um, I've also decided to include this help function. So if I type the keyword help and then the name of a function, it will return a um, definition of the function, how to use it. So I can change this to print and you'll see it'll give uh, the definition for print. So this is useful if you forget how to use a function, or forget how to type it properly, it gives you that um, instructions. Uh, and then the basics on variables. Um, so I've included string, integers, and floats. So a string is um, what you'll be using apostrophes uh, for, uh, or quotation marks. Um, so this isn't going to return anything because I'm just declaring all these variables. Uh, but you can see an int, I won't have any decimal, decimal places, and then um, a float will have those um, remainders. Then next, uh, I thought it would be important to include um, a little bit about loops. So first I have a very simple for loop. I have for i in range 10. Um, and this is not going to be inclusive, uh, print i plus i. So you'll see when I run that, first it'll do 0 plus 0, 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, etc. all the way down um, until 9 plus 9. And like I said, um, it's not inclusive. So if you wanted it to include 10, you would have to do um, range 11. And then you'll see that in the output. Then I've included a nested for loop, which is essentially a loop inside a loop. So for i in range 2, again not inclusive, and then for j in range 10 to 13, I have print i, and then I use a comma to separate them so you can differentiate the values, comma j. So when I run that, you'll see. Uh, like I said, it wasn't inclusive, so it'll go through 0 uh, and 1, and then it'll go through 10 through 12. So next is a while loop. Um, uh, for my example, I initialize the century variable, and the century variable is going to be the variable that you use for the comparison. So I've initialized num as 1, and then I say while num is less than or equal to 5, print num, and then this is going to be where you update that century variable. So the code will look at what num is initialized as, go into the while loop, compare the number to 5, print it, and then it will do um, like 1 plus 1. So you'll see when I run that, it will return 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, I also want to include um, essentially a do while loop. Do while loops are uh, a super useful um, function in languages like C and C++ that basically do this while some other condition is true. Um, there aren't, there isn't a keyword for it in Python, but you can replicate it using um, like while true. So I have i equal to one, and then while this is true, print i, and then I update it, and then I say, if i is greater than 4, break. So just stop running the code. So you'll see that returns 1, 2, 3, 4. So next, I think um, probably most important for applications within aerospace classes is using NumPy. Um, so this is something you'll learn. Uh, most likely if you take CS 101, I believe. So it's basically, it's a Python library that you can import and um, use it to solve math problems. 
Uh, so I've just done a very basic, like, um, declared an array, uh, and I use the random function, which will just take in random variables, so it would be different each time. Um, and then I print the array, and then here I use a slicing method to access a very specific number in the array. So if I run the uh, code, um, this first part is just the entire array. And then as you can see, I've indexed to find this specific number. So this is just a tool you can use if you need to find a certain variable or number in an array. And then I've also included um, just simple definitions of all the math operations in Python. So uh, plus sign for addition, minus for subtraction, uh, the asterisks for multiplication, um, and then for division, if you use a single uh, slash, uh, it, Python will return a float. And then if you use a double slash, um, it will essentially discard all the fractional parts and um, truncate. And then double asterisk for an exponent and a percent sign for modulus. So if you want to find a remainder. So then going off of um, NumPy, matlob, matplotlib is a module um, that you can use for creating plots. So this will be very useful for classes like 202 and um, 311 when you want to look at streamlines and whatnot. So you have to have already imported NumPy to use it. So since I've already imported NumPy here, uh, I can just go ahead and say from matplotlib import pyplot splt. And these phrases, um, this one and that one, are basically what you will be writing every time you import these modules. And so here, I'm just making a super basic graph. I label um, what my x is defined as and what my y is defined as. So for my x values, I'm using just a range from 1 to 10. And then um, I'm just setting y equal to 2x. And then you can, here's, like, this is just an example of, like, how you can use the label function. So plt.title. Um, and then use a string to write out the title, x label, y label, uh, and then you use the keyword plot to actually plot your graph, and then dot show to see it. So if I click run, you can see there's my title, my x label, my y label, um, and since I didn't define, uh, you know, any of the numbers on the side, it's automatically um, labeled them for me. Uh, and then you can use other keywords, which are super easy to Google to change color, whatnot, um, show grid lines, that kind of thing. Um, and then here, um, importing a CSV file is something that I found to be super important, and I did it a lot when I um, interned at NASA. So basically, you can use this um, import CSV built-in Python module for working with these types of files. And then a key thing to remember is that whatever the name of your CSV file, uh, that file has to be in the same folder as the Python file you're working with. So this kind of format with open and then the name of the file, and then it's important to include .csv or .txt. Um, as CSV file is what you're going to use for anytime you're importing. Um, this R indicates that I'm going to be reading the file. You can also type um, W to write into the file if you wanted to open a CSV file and then append text to it um, through Python. Uh, but it would do the same thing if I didn't include that. And then I um, use this dot reader function um, to access the file and then I use a delimiter which is a comma and this indicates how Python is going to recognize how to separate the elements in the file um, and then I just created two um, 
empty arrays that I will be appending my rows to. Um, and then for row in CSV reader, that's just uh, parsing through the CSV file, going through each row and then appending um, whatever text is in there. Um, and then I've also just included a um, example here from some code I wrote for some homework. So I'm importing NumPy, it's NP, and then importing the pi plot, um, and then I'm defining a vector field, um, and this was uh, like the definition of my vector field. Um, and so when I run this, you'll see it. Uh, it's, all, it's not the most perfect example, but uh, you can see how um, using this matplotlib and numpy can be helpful for uh, homework problems. So that's just one instance of how I've used it. So um, these are just some super basics. I will be making more in-depth Python tutorials in the future, but for now, um, this is just kind of a first introduction, um, some key things that I find important uh, to use. Um, so if you like this tutorial and you want to keep learning more about Python, feel free to let me know if there's something uh, you would like to learn more about, and I will be happy to write some code and give another tutorial in the future. So hopefully you found this helpful and we're able to pause and kind of look at, um, you know, uh, the code and hopefully my examples were easy to understand. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching.